I'm Kay, and I'm a late bloomer. Welcome to part two of winter urban gardening in Southern California. When the cold weather hits, you'll be glad your garden is planted and you don't have to go outside. December the 1st, I ventured out and harvested the last good tomatoes from my two stupice heirloom vines. It rained the first week in December and by the 7th, the ground was saturated and strange fungi started popping up. This is commonly referred to as dog turd fungi. Can you see why? <laughs> Did you know that fungi are not plants? They have their own kingdom. They are unique and separate life forms. Who knew? <laughs> we had some cold gray days in December. Slugs were out in force, even though I scattered my crushed eggshells. They love the tender green pea shoots. Stay one step ahead by planting more seed to replace the missing shoots. Just before Christmas, the sun came out and the garden came alive. Herbs started sprouting. Dill, borage, rare blue poppy, wildflower mix. Courtney helped me put down some fresh alfalfa. The pineapple guava was giving up the last of its fruit. Don't pick pineapple guava off the tree. Wait for it to drop. For Christmas Eve, I gathered up all of the edibles and made a Christmas salad. Christmas Day, I was presented with a bouquet of brown spore fungi. You think because your garden is planted, you can just sit back and relax and watch things grow, right? <laughs> well, not exactly. Now it was time to thin. I think because I have so much space on either side of the carrots that I won't thin them out. That's just too close. Only one of these can stay, so this one's taller, but a little bit more bug damage. This is cauliflower, so you can only have one every 18 inches. These three are right together. It's not a good idea to wait till they're this big to thin them because you run the risk of damaging the roots. Meanwhile, radishes were pushing out of the ground. They do that when they're ready. <laughs> I picked a handful. This is when the parrots showed up. Legend has it, a pet store in Santa Monica burned down decades ago, and a few of these parrots escaped. They like to live near the mouth of coastal canyons, so Pacific Palisades is ideal. Today they have about 70 in their flock, and they make a lot of racket, and they're very communal. They made a mess of my sunflowers last summer. <laughs> they love to watch the sunset, from my neighbor's 50-foot tree. With raised beds, not only do you save a lot of effort amending and reconditioning your own soil, but you have more control over weeds and pests. Though you'll have some bug damage, it's easier to control slugs and snails if you line the edge with copper foil. This is what the foil looks like after eight months. This is what it looks like new. You peel it from the backing. You stick it down on a clean surface. And the slugs and the snails won't cross it. After the last monarch caterpillar devoured the last of the milkweed, I chopped it all back. The pests have left this red tongue lettuce alone. It looks gorgeous, <laughs> but all that is just about enough for one salad. There's enough for a couple more salads here. I decided three salads of lettuce was not enough, and I planted another row of romaine in front of the snap peas. I worked a little worm castings and compost into the existing soil, dampened with a little captured rainwater, popped in the seeds, covered with a quarter inch of sifted compost, gave it another misting, 
Voila! We had about three hot days the third week in January with temperatures up to 80. Though my peas, lettuce, and cabbages were looking great, my kale sprouts weren't so lucky. Cutworm likes to hide right under the surface. They come at at night and cut the stems clean through. I mean, I don't know why. They don't eat it. They just cut it. You can combat cutworm by sinking plastic rings around your seedlings, an inch under the surface and an inch exposed. I cut off the bottom of yogurt cups and seedling pots and got them all protected. The third week in January, the big camellia bush exploded with blooms. They're right there. <laughs> so did the princess flower. The rosemary was blooming. Solanum, the blueberry bush. The garden was brightened with color. There's lots more coming in this winter garden, so stay tuned for part three. And if you like this video, would you like this video? and share with your friends. I'm Kay, I'm a late bloomer. Thanks for watching. See you next time. I pulled out the last handful of summer carrots. Then what did I do? Want to help me garden? Show them your pretty blue eyes. Oh, sh You really should set down the camera when you're trying to thin. It takes two hands.